Today's lesson is about engineering equivalence. And in order to get to our fifth grade, sixth grade, another way, a more efficient way of finding equivalence, we have to start back here at square one. So with me on your paper, I want you to write the fraction one half. And pictorially, I want to think about other fractions that are the same as one half. So I'm going to go ahead and draw two rectangles. I am going to be moving kind of quickly. So if I move too fast for you, you're going to need to make this up at XLT today or perhaps at home. And I'm thinking to myself, well, two fourths, two is half of four. So I could draw a picture of that. So I could cut my rectangle in half and cut each half in half. And then I could take my highlighter and I could shade in two of the four pieces. And I can look at my rectangle and I can see that half of my picture is shaded. So is one half and two fourths, do they equal the same amount? Yes. Another fraction quantity that I could write down would be three sixths. So if I wanted to write or draw a picture of 3 6, I could first start by cutting it in half. And then I would need three equal pieces on each side of my half. So I could partition it into six equal pieces, just like that. And now, I could shade in the numerator amount, six of the three pieces. So I could shade in one, two, three. And when I look at my picture, is half of my picture shaded? It is. I'm going to give you just a second to catch up. Maybe something you learned in fourth grade. Your, your teacher was talking about something called an EFT. Sometimes it's referred to that. It's actually called an equivalent fraction. I heard somebody call it train. Truck. I call it a table, but if you want to call it a train, that's fine. And so sometimes a faster approach would be to use this table to start off with your fraction, your base fraction, one half. and to skip count by ones on the top and skip count by twos on the bottom. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. And skip counting by twos on the bottom, two, four, six, eight, ten. By doing that, we're able to see some equivalence. That two fourths is the same picture that we drew over here, is the same as one half, right? And three sixths, which is the same picture we drew over here, is the same, right? They are equal. Now, was this faster, this equivalent fraction table, than drawing a picture? I also want you to look at something else. We talked about relationships. 
I'm going to wait because I have some people that may be talking while I'm talking, and that's very distracting for me. We talked about relationships at the very beginning of the year. Additive and multiplicative. Describe for me what do you see when we go from the number one to the number two and from the number two to the number four. What relationship do you see? Additive or multiplicative? Will. You see additive. How do you see additive? Okay. I'll go with that. But if it's additive here, then it has to be here as well. So let's draw another arrow. How do you go from 1 to 3 and from 2 to 6? What is happening here? Klein. Mm. So if we multiply by 3 on the top, we must multiply by 3 on the bottom. So is this additive or multiplicative? multiplicative? It is multiplicative, which means that we can't add. We could, but it wouldn't be consistent. And whenever we decide on a rule like multiplicative, it must stay multiplicative throughout. It cannot flip-flop back and forth. It must be consistent. So we could say multiply by 2 on the top, multiply by 2 on the bottom. So what is that relationship from the number 1 to the number 4 and from the number 2 to the number 8? What is that relationship, Bryson? times 4 and it would be multiplicative it hasn't changed it's just a different number and finally from the number 1 to the number 10 I'm sorry to the number 5 and the number 2 to the number 10 what is that relationship right there times 5 exactly right I don't know about you, but was that very fast? Yeah. Yeah. What if I told you there's a faster way? Hold up. Our faster way would be our wonderful one. We're going to use the number one all year long. And so... We're going to start with the fraction one half, and we want to find something that is equivalent. Something that's equivalent, and I call this higher terms. Higher terms. I want you to give me a number that is not, that has to be higher than 5, but less than 15. Give me a number. And we're going to find an equivalent for one half. Lyric, what's your number? 12. If we know a number like 12, we can multiply the top and the bottom by 12. And we get a new fraction name. What is that new fraction name going to be, Joseph? Twelve twenty-fours. Is twelve half a twenty-four? Yeah. It is equivalent. And you know how we did that? Because you guys told me a while ago that anytime you had the same number on top and on bottom in our story, do you remember that? Anytime we have the same number on top and on bottom, that's really a number one. And isn't that way more efficient than making an equivalent fraction train? Yeah. Isn't that way more efficient than making a table and a picture? Yeah, it's, so easy. it's gonna be way easier. So here's what we want to think about. This was kind of like third, fourth grade pictures. It's okay still to use some things. This is more fourth grade. This is moving towards fifth and sixth grade. This is where we want to move to. Do you understand? 
Let's do another one. In your notes, write this with me. I'm going to go a little faster this time. We have the fraction two-thirds. Two-thirds. I want to find equivalents that are higher names than two-thirds. So over here, I'm going to build two rectangles. Just to prove my point, two rectangles. Okay. I'm going to first cut them into thirds. Cutting them into thirds first. That's our base fraction. That's what we're starting with. But I want to prove that there's another name for two thirds out there. So let's go ahead and write four sixths down. Four sixths is one of our fraction names that we're trying to prove is equivalent and the fraction six ninths. Four six, six ninths. I'll give you a second to catch up. Now, if I want this to be six equal pieces, I could just take my picture and cut it horizontally. Do I now have six equal pieces? Yes. And when I shade in four of those six pieces, so there's two, and there's four, is two-thirds of this picture shaded? If you get rid of that horizontal line, is two-thirds of our picture shaded? One, two of the three. No. So is this, is four six the same as two thirds? Okay. What about six ninths? I need nine equal pieces. Some of you might be going, oh my goodness, how are we going to cut that? Well, we could just cut it twice horizontally. There's one time. There's two times. Now I have nine equal pieces. I need to shade in six. There's three. There's six. It was easy. I like to make things easy. That's my goal every morning. Make your life easy. Do you see the two pieces out of three is shaded? And another name for that could be six nights, right Hugh? Okay, write this down with me, two-thirds. Maybe you're beyond pictures, but you're not ready for number for wonderful one. One thing you could do is you could make an EFT. That's skip counting by twos on the top and skip counting by threes on the bottom. Two, four, six, eight. 10. Counting by threes on the bottom, right, Bella? Three, six, nine, 12, 15. Hey, look, is four six our picture model in, in our EFT? Is six ninths our picture model in our EFT? So we could really continue with this on and on forever to find equivalent fractions, right? Okay. But for those of you, Alex, smart, who are ready to go, that's so tiresome. I want something more efficient. I want something more fast. I want you to write down the fraction two thirds. And I want you to think to yourself, I've got to find a common denominator. I've got to, I want to rename this fraction. We're going to multiply the numerator by, top, by 5 and the denominator by 5. We're going to multiply by 5 fifths. And when we do that, what's 2 times 5 going to give you? 10. And what's 3 times 5 going to give you? Now look, 
we were able to find an equivalent without even having to make that huge EF train, right? Which way do you like better? Wonderful one. You like number one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Okay. You know, all good things, we have to like cement them in our brain. So we're going to do one more example. Put down three fourths. Three fourths. I'm going to try not to go too fast here. We started with our picture model. Two rectangles. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to cut this in half first. And I need four equals. Um, I am going to start with, we're going to do six eighths. <laughs> and 12 sixteenths. We want to prove that those are equivalent. So if my denominator is eight, I need how many equal pieces? Eight. eight. So I need four on each side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to shade in how many pieces? Uh, six. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I kind of outlined my fourths, do you see that three of the four pieces are shaded? Let's do 16. Some of you might be thinking, whoa, we're going to have to draw some small lines, right? Yep. Not really. i got a plan for that. First, cut it in half, because cutting things in half is pretty easy. Then kind of follow your marks for fourths up here, just like this. We have eight pieces, right? What's a quick way to double that? Done. 16 pieces. Shade in. 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Well, looky there. So we know these are the same. We need to prove that they're the same by making an EFT. What are we going to count by on the top to make our EFT? What can we count by on the top? Three. Three. Six. Nine. Twelve. Fifteen. What would we want to count by on the bottom? Four. Four. Eight. Twelve. Sixteen. Twenty. Hey, look. It's six eighths. Also one of our picture models. Yeah. Is twelve sixteenths. Also one of our picture models. Yeah. So we know these are equivalent. We want that faster way. We're almost done. Take three-fourths. Let's use our friendly number one. Let's just make it really fun. Let's multiply by ten. Okay, you want to do one harder? How about twelve? Ten is an easy number, though. Let's do ten. If you multiply by the same number on the top and on the bottom, our ten-tenths is disguised as our friendly number one. And 3 times 10 is 30. And 4 times 10 is 40. Oh, looky there. 
And if I cover up the zeros, what fraction do I really have? Three over four. Three over four. 